Imagine that you take out a piece of paper and you start to draw a graph. Now maybe the graph you draw looks something like this. You'll notice that two of the edges cross over each other and we call that an edge crossing. But you could draw the exact same graph in a different way with no edge crossings. So we'll do that in red. Now both of these graphs are the complete graph on four vertices, that's K4. The red picture tells us that K4 can be drawn with no edges crossing. This leads us to two important definitions. A planar graph is a graph which can be drawn in the plane without any edge crossings. And a plane graph is a planar graph which has been drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. So in our example, we know that K4 is a planar graph, but only the red picture is a plane graph. Now a plane graph can divide the plane into regions. So let's take a look at our example again. We have the drawing of K4, which is a plane drawing, and we can label our regions R1, R2, R3, and don't forget R4, the region that goes outside of the whole graph. Notice that R1, R2, and R3 are bounded, they're contained, but R4 is an unbounded region. In fact, every plane graph has an unbounded region which is called the exterior region. Let's look at some more examples. So if we draw the triangle, we can see that it just divides the plane into two regions, the one inside the triangle and the one outside. And if we draw another graph, say a tree on some number of vertices, we can see that it's easily drawn in the plane and it also just has one region, which is the unbounded region. It's actually pretty straightforward to prove that every tree can be drawn as a plane graph and has only one region, which is the unbounded region. The boundary of a region in a plane graph is the set of vertices and edges that outline it. So if we take a look at this example graph, which is a plane graph, and this example graph, which is also a plane graph, we can label the regions R1, R2, and R3, and we see that although the graphs are isomorphic, these are different plane graphs. They have different boundaries. For example, if you were to find the boundary of R2, it would contain only that triangle in the first picture, whereas the boundary of R2 in the other picture looks different. So keep in mind that even though these graphs are clearly the same in the sense that they are isomorphic, they could be drawn in different ways in terms of a plane drawing. Let's look at another example. I'll start by drawing three blue vertices and then three red vertices. The question is, can you connect every blue vertex to every red vertex so that no edges cross? You may recall that this graph is called a complete bipartite graph. In particular, this graph is K33. And it turns out that K33 is not planar. So the takeaway is that not every graph can be drawn in a plane way. Now let's see why it is that K33 is not planar. We're going to just talk through an informal proof. First, we notice that K33 has a Hamilton cycle. So I'm going to start by redrawing the six vertices and I'm just going to draw the edges of a Hamilton cycle. So let's just draw those. And I noticed that I had some crossing of edges right there. But what I can do is redraw that cycle so that it doesn't have any crossings. So let's do that. We notice that we still have red and blue vertices, which are scattered around, and we now have our Hamilton cycle without any crossing. Okay, but we're kind of missing three edges because in the original graph, every blue vertex is connected to every red vertex. That means if you take a look at a blue vertex in the Hamilton cycle, it needs to have an edge to go to every red vertex. And right now it's missing one of those. Each blue vertex is missing an edge to a red vertex. That means that we have three more edges to go in and they are the diagonal edges in this Hamilton cycle. Now let's see what happens if we put in one of those edges. Okay, we're fine so far. But now if we try to put in another one, we can't go across the middle of the Hamilton cycle without hitting the edge we just put. So we have to go around the outside of the Hamilton cycle. And now we're still fine, no crossings but we have one remaining edge. Let's see what we can do with it. If we try to go across the middle of the Hamilton cycle, we get stuck, we hit the other one, so we can't do that. If we try to go around the outside of the Hamilton cycle, we again hit an edge, so we're gonna get stuck. 
What we're really saying here is that by the pigeonhole principle, we have three edges going into two zones and there will be two edges in one of those zones. In other words, there will be two edges which either go through the middle of the Hamilton cycle or through the outside of the Hamilton cycle. And in either of those cases, they're going to cross. So we will always end up with an edge crossing. And that's what tells us that K33 is not planar. So this should give you a sense for why this graph is not planar. We'll actually see a more formal proof by contradiction later on in a future video. In case you're not familiar with the pigeonhole principle, check out this fun video about the pigeonhole principle. Now this video was an introduction to the idea of planar graphs. We're going to talk a lot more about planar graphs in future videos in much more detail. Check out related videos on this side and I'll see you next time.